Good morning, everyone, um, who made it here in this early morning and who is joining us via live stream. Really appreciate your interest. I will talk to you about growing moonshots in a Petri dish. If um, the technology works, then we can get started. Perfect. Okay. So, what is a moonshot? Moonshot thinking is something that reminds us more of science fiction and visionaries in entrepreneurship and literature than necessarily people in the lab, right? But we need moonshot thinking as a human species. We need moonshot thinking as scientists, as innovators, as engineers, and as an economy. So moonshot thinking is where a huge global challenge interacts with a scientific breakthrough that people make happen in the lab through a much better solution. So we have a difference between innovation and disruption in entrepreneurship. Innovation is something that creates an incremental improvement. It's like taking an existing product maybe to a slightly altered market or slightly improving an existing product for an existing market. But moonshot thinking is a lot riskier than that. It's a lot bolder and it often fails. But it is important because they are the drivers of human history and in our development of science and technology. So moonshot thinking is not necessarily about just bending the rules and innovating. It's really about pushing through and breaking the status quo. It's, it's very much a disruption. And it offers typically something more in the concept of a 10 times better solution as opposed to a 10% incremental improvement. So we're all familiar, I think, um, as generally curious people with the Ford T model and Nikola Tesla as a name who invented the AC induction motor. And the a less known technology was developed by Hedy Lamar and George Antheil. He was an avant-garde pianist and composer, and she <laughs> was Hollywood actress by day, but she was very much interested in science and engineering and very, very bright, and she was an inventor by night. So the two of them came up with a new solution for a secret communication system, and he got inspired by her friend, the pianist, and together with, um, inspired by these changing um, parts of, of the piano, they invented a frequency hopping spread spectrum system that they patented, and at the time it was much too early, but today, this technology is actually an integral part of our Wi-Fi. The visionaries of today, so if we think the Mark Zuckerberg of today is likely not going to start another Facebook, and the Steve Jobs of today is likely not going to start another Apple. You get the idea. And both of these, so Steve Jobs said, he sees, he, in his late days, he saw a huge potential at the intersection of technology and biology. And Apple is very interested in digital health, and so is Google with their spin-offs, Verily and Calico. And Bill Gates said in an interview that if he'd be a teenager today, he wouldn't make computers, he would hack biology. So I think it just shows that people in technology and, and the general um, human race, we, we all see the potential. The question is how, how do we harness it? So. The first step is maybe, hopefully, you will interact with each other because if you're all interested in science and technology, you may well be sitting next to the next visionary of this generation. So how many of you are familiar with the Gartner hype cycle? So some of you? OK. Um, Gartner are a tech kind of think tank consultancy. And they came up with this Gartner 
hype cycle. So they map out um, different technologies across that cycle. Apologies if it's a bit small, um, but it just demonstrates that technologies go from very early stage R&D, an innovation trigger, through a peak of inflated expectations. This is where the general hype happens and um, a mass public learns about new technologies and journalists go completely wild about it. And then you have uh, a bit of a disillusionment when, when um, expectations adjust to the realities of the technology and more actual practical uses are, are found. And there's a slope of enlightenment where these technologies are actually applied and creating a benefit and adding value to people. And there's a bit of a plateau of productivity and a lot of new things are, are needed. So with moonshots, it very much happens in the range of the innovation trigger. So it's something that only very early adopters know of or are familiar with. And I think all of us here are incredibly privileged to work at the forefront of science, technology, engineering, and are generally part of the innovator community. But as it was mentioned before, when you go outside to random people on the street, they, they surely have heard and are aware of biotechnology, but if you ask them about 3D printing organs from patient cells, um, to, to a lot of people that sounds like science fiction. And if you're familiar with the topic, you know that this is actually being done in hospitals and we're achieving more and more breakthroughs in, in that area. And a while ago, another moonshot was the $1,000 Chino. I've adjusted it now to the $100 Chino because we have almost reached that already. So in 2000, the cost of whole genome sequencing was about a million dollars and it took several years. And now um, in 2007, it was just a little bit less than $10,000. And now we can do it for about $1,000. So the pace of how this technology accelerates is just tremendous and impressive. Another example is the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative <laughs> and a bit um, a tech expression of solving all diseases and solving cancer, which is great, but um, yeah, and with a lot of capital and human resources, who knows, I think we can expect great things. Um, another one is a post-animal economy. So as we are learning to grow meat in vitro and make hamburgers from lab meat, um, finding replacements for, from animal-derived products like mushroom leathers, we can actually grow a lot of things with biology, so this opens a whole new area of our economy which can bring great improvement. So a new bioeconomy is an economy where biology is very much plugged into the general landscape of technology innovation. So a biology that can take advantage of additive manufacturing, like that has led to 3D bioprinting, or um, big data and giant data analytics. This gives us a huge advantage to actually make sense of all these giant data sets in health, because we have so much data, data everywhere, but who is going to make sense of that? Who's going to understand that? And are we going to be the ones making sense of it first? or are machines going to make sense of it first? So artificial intelligence is another very hyped word and probably on the hype cycle there will be a point of adjusted expectations, but actually in medicine they have real uses. So today algorithms can detect skin melanoma with greater accuracy than doctors can. And the same applies for mental health diagnosis. So there, there's a tremendous potential. And at Rebel Bio, we believe in the convergence of technology and biology because it can really power our future. Other examples are 
biotechnologies that are starting to face the consumer. So personal genomics and genome sequencing like um, 23andMe or Ancestry.com where people can, it's not very um, <laughs> appetizing, but they can um, uh, deliver to the firm, um, I think a pretty huge <laughs> sample <laughs> of saliva and, and get their um, parts of their genomes analyzed and get information for them. And today it's, it's more kind of lifestyle applications because precisely we don't yet understand all these underlying factors, but it is a great way to get a huge, uh, just masses of people engaged with, with the benefits of, of technology or amino labs and bento labs that you're bringing bioengineering to the home, which is just amazing. Or um, labs are going to get smarter as well with the IoT revolution. We already have pipetting robots instead of armies of <laughs> poor PhD students moving liquids from one um, tube from to, to, the, to another tube. There's a huge potential for automation, as I'm sure most of you are aware. And we even have uh, cloud labs where you can order a designer organism just with your credit card, and it will be assembled somewhere in a lab at the other end of the world, which is just incredible. And um, Oxford Nanopore, they have just recently created another innovation which lets you sequence genomes just from your mobile device. So the pace at which technology develops is exponentially increasing. And DNA is emerging as nanomaterial to store data. Um, sequencing and DNA synthesis are seeing more and more improvements as well. So at Rebel Bio, we want to harness these moonshots. So I, I'm incredibly privileged to work at a moonshot factory. And we use the word moonshot to remind us that during these late hours or early hours in the lab, which, which can be incredibly difficult, incredibly frustrating because science and things don't necessarily work and sometimes these things we wish the most would work, they don't and sometimes it's not within our control. And a moonshot just helps us to keep thinking big and keep dreaming or connecting with the actual purpose of, of us being there. And as I mentioned earlier, a moonshot addresses a global challenge. Um, we live in an ever-changing world. We heard Brexit, Trump, all this, so there's, we have a lot of problems, but we also have the potential to create breakthrough solutions. So public health with rising antibiotic resistance or an aging population will bring entirely new disease prevalences, so diabetes and cancer, or um, economic shifts with increasing urbanization, our risks for widespread pandemics increases. Um, as new, as emerging economies are lifted out of poverty and these um, areas have more buying power, whole new segments of consumers open climate change, it needs no explanation. Um, clean energy is, is a big effort. Cybersecurity is, is a, another issue. So I want to show you some, some of the Rebel Bio graduates, which are addressing these global issues. So we have companies that create therapeutics or new drug discovery devices. For example, Moirai Biodesign, they want to create a cancer diagnostics technology with plug and play RNA. That is pretty much a moonshot, but really, really interesting. We are very glad to have them on board. We have other companies that address um, food. So we can, for example, in vertical farms in, in big cities as it is piloted, you can pack so much more food into a smaller space. And also with biology, we can feed the world. So we appreciate that we have 
um, amazing companies addressing these, these issues. We have um, companies in clean tech making chemicals and other products with microbial cell factories in a much more sustainable way, reducing toxic waste. We have um, tools like Helixworks that we're going to welcome later to the stage. They offer um, data storage on Amazon, so this could address um, an emerging threat of cybersecurity as offering an offline safe space for long-term data storage. And we also are very happy to share some of the successes that our startups had. So Helixworks, as mentioned, is the first to offer commercial DNA storage to the broad masses on Amazon. Um, Hyacinth just um, massively increased their yield for cannabinoid production uh, with yeast cell factories. Um, some of our companies had great revenues like um, Afinor with their cultured coffee. Um, another one uh, is Mufri, it's now called Perfect Day and they make animal-free milk. And they were able to, even within our program before Demo Day, to raise $2 million in funding, which is amazing. So our companies are making great impact in shaping and moving the bioeconomy. And they, they are the ones that prove that believing in science and technology as an innovation force can really pay off. But these companies, these projects need funding, they need support, and this is what Rebel Bio is privileged to offer to them. So we want to thank our academic partners, our commercial partners, and the Indie Bio and Rebel Bio graduates who believe in us as much as we believe in them. We hope, we, we are excited to see what comes comes out of them. And as we also heard, SOSV is, is an example of believing in science and technology. So we are, as we heard, very active in life sciences. And yeah, so the Rebel Bio team wishes you an awesome conference today. And if you would like to stay in touch, feel free to get in touch on Twitter or Facebook. Or if you're interested in applying, um, here is the link, which you can also find on our website. Yeah, thank you very much.